Hello, Jeff Zwerink, and welcome to Give and Take, the segment of our show where we look at important scientific ideas and how they help affirm the truth of the Christian faith. Today, we're joined again by uh, founder and president of Reasons to Believe, Dr. Hugh Ross, and we are going to explore the role that beetles play in developing flying robots. Hugh, it's good to have you here today. Well, thank you for inviting me, Jeff. Well, and we're going to be talking about beetles, and this is not the famous rock group. These are actually the bugs that crawl the earth. So beetles, in some sense, seem a little mundane. What is so special about them? Well, it's really special. They're the most diverse life form on the face of the earth. We're actually looking at a half million distinct species of beetles. Remarkable diversity of design. And what amazes me is how biologists are able to study these diverse beetle species and discover designs that we can apply to advance our modern technology. So, so what are some of the interesting features you see out of these beetles? Uh, you know, what, what makes them so diverse in their speciation? Well, I'm fascinated by the fact that uh, they're, you know, they have the armor plate. Some of them actually have an armor plate, which makes them very difficult to get, uh, get out of your house. Um, and they're able to feed on almost anything. Uh, but then you look at the wing structures and the way their feet are designed and their eye structures. And you see that each different species is designed to take advantage of a particular resource in their environment. So it sounds like there really are lots of different kinds of beetles. What beetles were these particular scientists investigating and what did they learn by studying them? Well, the rhinoceros beetles, uh, which are the biggest beetles we see in the natural realm. I mean, some of them get to be a half foot across. So we're talking, these are really big insects. And uh, you know, because they're so large, we can actually study their morphology in great detail. And this new research paper basically is a group of scientists that have done that very thing. What they notice is that these rhinoceros beetles, for example, have, have a nice armor plate that protects their delicate wing structure. And they're designed so that the armor plate can fold away, but the wings come up. And what amazes me is this beetle, as big and as heavy as it is, can actually fly quite efficiently. And so, you know, how it is that something that big and heavy uh, can fly the way it does. And what really amazed the researchers, this beetle is able to bump into things while it's flying and it doesn't really bother its trajectory. And it's like, wow, that's something we could really use uh, in, in our aircraft. None of our aircraft for example, jet fighter aircraft, if they hit something, it's game over. And yet these beetles are able to bump into things and it doesn't bother them. That is really remarkable. And so if, so if I get what you're saying, there are these beetles that uh, three, four, five, six inches long that actually can fly. I mean, that, that's a kind of remarkable thing in and of itself. But so they, so they have an armor that plates over their body and this armor can actually kind of move away so that the wings extend. Is that what you're saying? Exactly, yeah. And so, so what is it that, I mean, do, does the armor plate just kind of pull the wings along or is there some more sophistication in how that works? Yeah, the armor plate folds back and lets these delicate wings, it's because the wings are so delicate that it's able to cause this heavy big beetle to fly. And so, yeah, that's one of the features of design. The wings have to be lightweight and delicate and therefore they need to be protected when they're moving along the ground. But yeah, it's designed so that the armor plate folds away, let the wings unfurl. But what these uh, people discovered, these researchers discovered uh, with uh, very uh, fast uh, moving cameras, uh, you know, cameras that actually take like 20,000 shots a second, they're able to discern that the reason why these incredibly delicate wings are able to bump into objects without being damaged, they're designed that every time they hit something, they basically fold up origami style and uh, therefore they're not damaged. And as soon as they get past the collision object, they immediately unfurl and they're back into their flying structure. And what amazed the researchers is how rapidly these wings can fold up when they bump into an object. And likewise, how rapidly they can unfurl again into a full flight structure. So it's only a split second uh, where this beetle doesn't have his wings in flight mode. And the, what they observed is it doesn't even disturb the trajectory. They're able to maintain their flight pattern, their trajectory, in spite of bumping into not just one object, 
but multiple objects. So, so what are the implications of this research now that we have seen how these beetle wings actually work? Well, the researcher's paper ends with their description of them building a drone uh, where it's collision proof. And they basically demonstrated how this uh, flying drone uh, can bump into objects and the wing structure is undamaged and it can keep maintaining its trajectory. And basically they close their paper off by saying, there are times when we need to send a drone with high sensitivity cameras into an enclosed structure uh, where there's lots of objects in the different rooms and find, for example, a bomb uh, that's been planted there or some other dangerous item, uh, maybe a gas canister. And so they said it'd be really helpful if we had flying drones that could go into a crowded building where there's all kinds of objects in the way and being able to have it to survey everything and basically determine, okay, what do we need to do to disarm the bomb or take care of this dangerous gas canister or even going into a place, for example, where gas fumes have been released and you need to find some critical medicine that a patient needs, or you need to rescue somebody uh, that's been uh, caught up in one of these situations. And uh, then they also said, you know, it'd be nice uh, for our military if they had fighter aircraft uh, where they could bump into objects and it still doesn't disturb the mission. And they said, they actually think that there's better chances of this technology being funded if we realize it's got military advantages. So, so you've got this team of researchers that looked at these abundant species of beetles, chose one, found one, figured out how the wings worked, and now they're able to build things that are better than what we can, better than what we've been able to do. In other words, they've gained inspiration from doing this. Uh, that yeah. seems to have theological implications as well. Kind of address those, if you will. Well, they were able to copy the designs that they saw in these rhinoceros beetles. They were able to develop a drone uh, that is collision tolerant, but they also noted it doesn't work quite as well as a beetle. Uh, the beetle actually does it better. Uh, but the fact that we were able to copy this elegant design in a creature and come up with a useful instrument really tells us there's a creator out there that designed all the different species of life and built within them optimal designs and isn't it great that we're able to copy those designs, maybe not do as well as a beetle, but get quite close. Thanks, Hugh. I appreciate your comments today. You're welcome. Yeah, as we look at creation, we just find remarkable forms of life that are out there. And, and I find it fascinating that as we go study these forms of life, we gain inspiration for how to build better designs. You know, it seems like there is, there's the apprentice and then there's the master. And if we, the apprentice, are looking at creation to get better inspiration for how to build better technology, it really does point to there being a designer behind it all. You know, I'd encourage you to go to reasons.org and check out Hugh's blog on this very fascinating topic. It's Beetle Wing Design Inspires Flying Robot Construction helps you understand this fascinating discovery, as well as how you can use it to point others to the gospel of Christ.